We all know big is bigger than small. And of course, massive is bigger than big. And mega is even bigger than massive and way bigger than big. Well, this isn't big. And it's not massive. And it's not just mega. This is the mega massive, oh my goodness, Merry Mortgage Giveaway from Cable Bahamas. Our grand prize winner will get their mortgage and utilities paid for a full year. Another winner will get their utility payments. And another winner will get all their cable services for an entire year. That's up to $40,000 in prizes in the mega massive, oh my goodness, Merry Mortgage Giveaway. If you want to win, just sign up for Rev Voice Bahamaland, the unlimited nationwide home phone service that's packed with features for one low price of just $14.99 a month. This is the time to upgrade your home phone service to Rev Voice Bahamaland, and we'll pay your mortgage and utility payments up to $25,000 for a full year. Rev Voice Bahamaland, the Bahamas' most reliable home phone service with nationwide coverage and a chance to win in the mega massive, oh my goodness, Merry Mortgage Giveaway. A disappointing turnout at the FNM's rally in the alley. A former cabinet minister blasts the prime minister over his recent trip overseas. The two BEC unions threatening to turn up the heat this week over workers' sick pay benefits. Plus, Christmas comes a few weeks early for a 15-year-old college student. The details of those stories and a whole lot more on the way. I'm Bonique Toot and NB12 The Weekend Edition starts now. Tonight, senior members of the Free National Movement, including the party's leader, hit the stage last night during a rally in the alley to blast the Christie administration over several issues plaguing the country. However, even though senior members were forced to admit that they didn't quite draw the type of crowd they were hoping for, Jasmine Bonamy was there and filed this report. Taking the podium were several FNM MPs, senators, former candidates, and of course, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis. The rally, which got off to a late start, drew a small crowd that gradually grew to just under 100 people by the end of the night. A handful of party supporters sat in front of the stage, while a vast majority of them lined the streets. Some of them even left the rally before the party's leader took the stage. However, FNM Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner and Senator Carl Bethel insisted that despite the poor turnout, there were still powerful messages to be shared. They added that low turnouts have never stopped them from winning elections in the past, saying the number of people who turn up at party events does not measure a party's success. I told them our numbers are small, but we are powerful. You all have 10,000 more percent people here tonight than we had in 2005, and we won in 2007. The disappointing turnout didn't stop the party's lineup of speakers from taking the stage, though, to address several issues like the proposed implementation of value-added tax. MP for East Grand Bahama Peter Turnquest insisted there needs to be more consultation with the public before VAT is implemented next summer. Meantime, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis addressed ongoing labor issues. This government must sit with all unions and communicate the issues and seek a resolution to the problems immediately, not, not tomorrow, immediately. Why are they so afraid to talk? In the New Bahamas, there is no room for secret, clandestine governance. Any stable democracy must be matured enough to give its citizens access to information. Last night's rally was preceded by a walkabout in the Golden Isles constituency and the Charles Maynard Fun Run Walk. Party leaders say they hope to have similar events in the near future. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Prime Minister Perry Christie's defense of his recent trip to Sri Lanka, London and Rome is not sitting too well with a senior FNM member. 
Tommy Turnquest, who served as National Security Minister under the last Ingram administration, accused Christie of failing to account for use of public funds and instead making bogus comparisons to trips made by his predecessor. When asked by a NASA Guardian reporter to account for the cost of his trip, the Prime Minister seemed to take offense, insisting that the trip was budgeted for and that he cut some cabinet ministers from that trip to cut costs. He also asserted that he wasn't in South Africa and traveling around to look at football. Well, that was a clear reference to Hubert Ingram, who was invited to South Africa by FIFA, the World Football Association, when he was prime minister. Turnquest said in a statement issued today, Sadly and most disappointing, Mr. Christie wrongly and incompetently compared the cost of his travels to that of a trip to South Africa in the summer of 2010 by former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram. The statement continues, a simple inquiry by Mr. Christie would have shown that Mr. Ingram's airline ticket to South Africa was paid for from his personal funds. He added, my travel was similarly paid for privately and not by the government of the Bahamas. Turnquest also said that the public has a right to such information from its elected officials, particularly the prime minister. A weeks-long standoff between BEC's executive chairman Leslie Miller and the corporation's line staff union could come to a head this week when leaders of the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union learn if member salaries were adjusted, eliminating a sick pay benefit. And if that happens, union leaders say they will stand by recent threats to take immediate action. The union is going to wait until uh, next week to see if any member is cut. If any member is cut, the union will take some form of action. What it will be will be a surprise when it comes. President of the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union, Stefano Green, says he's not backing down from threats to take action if even one employee's salary is adjusted this week. Green says he wouldn't be surprised if Miller lives up to his promise to end what the chairman labeled as double-dipping, but warned that for every action, there's a reaction. I expect that the chairman will try to be as mature as possible and realize that his error and realize that seeing that this matter is in front of the prime minister, that he will not take any action, uh, any legal action, because the union is prepared not only to take the necessary industrial action, but also to sue the corporation and sue him. Green has the full support of the National Congress of Trade Unions, which recently threatened to take mass industrial action over BEC's decision to amend the sick pay policy. NCTU President Jennifer Isaacs Dotson and BPSU President John Pinder took grave exception to Miller's claim that BEC has people in Florida and Grand Bahama on alert to restore power supply if workers go on strike, and that anyone who takes action would not return to BEC. We are quite disheartened to hear a chairman and even members of parliament say that they're prepared to bring in persons from Miami, that they're prepared to bring in foreign teachers into this country, that we claim that we don't have any money, but we can afford to bring in workers from Grand Bahama, we can afford to bring them in from Miami, we can afford to bring in foreign teachers to replace teachers if we were to go on strike. I don't want no black Christmas, but it's definitely. I don't want no black Christmas, but simultaneously you got to do what you have to do to uh, protect your membership. BEC employees on sick leave currently receive 100% of their salaries from the corporation and claim one-third of their salary from NIB. Green says around two dozen employees are currently on sick leave. The union president insisted they are not double-dipping, asserting that they desperately need those benefits to pay high medical expenses. National insurance benefit is not a double-dipping benefit. National insurance benefit is a benefit that is there for you to be able to accommodate those additional bills when the time comes, and that's what it really is. And so when persons out there are speaking unintelligently about double dipping and it's illegal, all you have to do is check the law. The Bahamas Electrical Workers Union also has the support of BEC's managers who are currently on work to rule. President of the Bahamas Electrical and Utilities and Managerial Union Clinton Minnis urged his members to withdraw all good faith relations with BEC's chairman and prepare for what he called a united labor movement resolve. Minnis also noted that all of their affiliates are on high alert, adding that they are seeking an urgent meeting with top government officials. 
Well, amid growing unrest in the trade union movement, the newly appointed director of labor is urging union leaders to put the country's needs before their egos. Robert Fackerson, who is a former trade unionist, addressed members of the National Congress of Trade Unions during the NCTU's sixth triennial Delegates Congress. Let us not forget the fact that we have issues internally to our organization, but we also have a commitment to work with the social partners to continue growth and development of this nation. We have to look out for the generations of behemoths to come. And in looking at those things, we need to put aside our personal egos and put aside sometimes our personal goals and look at what's best for the Congress first and for the nation second. Fackerson noted that the trade union movement is at a crossroads as it buckles under both internal and external pressures. However, he encouraged union leaders to work with government. I encourage you, my sisters and brothers, to work with the social partners, work with the employers, work with the government of the Bahamas to resolve all issues. As a trade unionist at heart, I will never, ever, ever tell a trade unionist not to do things that they think is in the best interest of their organization. But I want you to always remember that we have a nation to build. We have generations of behemoths yet unborn to set the pace for.